Hey everyone, and welcome to a new episode of Imagination Mega Park. Now in uh, this episode, just like the previous episode, I'm going to work on the subsea sands area. And in this episode, uh, I want to add a big roller coaster to this area. And the kind of roller coaster that I want to build is a flying coaster. Now uh, I kind of want to have it uh, yeah, partly set deeper in the ground. So I'm going to do some digging in this area and create another deeper level. And part of the coaster will be above the ground here. Now uh, I will also do something which I often don't really play with and that's some custom support work. Which is something I often don't really do on these bigger coasters. But today uh, I'm going to give it a try. Now before I do any building, um, I think it's time to name some more handymen after commenters on my last Imagination Mega Park video. <laughs> Alright, thank you so much for the nice comments and you are all now part of the Handyman Vomit Sweep Squad. Now if you also want to uh, be put in the park as a Handyman, uh, just leave some uh, fun or interesting comments. Alright, with that done, um, it's now time to start building that roller coaster. Alright, I've finished the layout for this uh, flying coaster. Now, the lift hill isn't too high, so it uh, goes at a pretty uh, tame speed through most of the track. And here, first you can see a vertical loop. Um, yeah, kind of took that from uh, Starry Sky Ripper. And then after that, um, we find this uh, big pretzel loop here. I will dig it out a little bit more here, so the guests have a greater view of it. And then finally, um, here there's another, uh, uh, yeah, typical flying coaster inversion. So guys first uh, get put on their backs here, then they drop down, and then they travel through this uh, inside uh, half loop. And finally, here's uh, one more twist before they return back to the station. Now, uh, I spent quite some time on this, uh, um, yeah, this area here, because something which uh, usually quite annoys me is, well, I'll just show you. When you have a twist like this, and you immediately follow that up with bank track, um, yeah, it gives this really sharp um, transition. Especially from this angle, it just looks really bad. It's almost like a 90 degree kink in the track. So when that happens, um, I always try to make it such that I can just follow up with a straight piece of track, so the transition is less sharp, and then I'll follow up with the bank track. But yeah, sometimes it takes some quid fiddling to... Uh, figure out how uh, to do something like that. Alright, um, I've done some crude um, landscaping around the ride. I'm going to now um, yeah, do a little bit more of that, but try to uh, make the landscape just sink uh, around the ride, just to uh, make it a, a little bit less uh, square shaped. <laughs> Alright, let's go. Okay, uh, I've done some of the crude landscaping around the coaster. Now, I decided to hold off on uh, decorating the sides of the walls with canyon pieces because it's probably wiser to do the custom supports for the coaster first. Now, for some parts, like the lift hill, um, doing these custom supports will be easy because uh, all you have to do is just um, yeah, add another copy this track piece and it will give you uh, this nice uh, portal frame. For this uh, for these uh, supports 
I think for the lift hill, that's uh, that's already uh, good enough. Now I will add some uh, multi-dimension coast track under here with the spine invisible, and that will give us some uh, nice, uh, uh, yeah, that will give us a nice catwalk under this uh, lift hill. Now, and for uh, a lot of these other supports here, it will be a little bit more tricky to uh, make some nice looking custom support. Um, yeah, uh, something which uh, is possible to do is just to make all the uh, supports here invisible. Then you can make some uh, extra track. Uh, for example, uh, we'll just comp just put some flying coaster track. Then we'll make this track. Um, uh, we'll make the spine of the track invisible, like so. And then you can really have supports anywhere you want. And what I basically plan to do is, um, yeah, just do the support like most people do them. And that's let's turn off the cheat for enabling all drawable track pieces, like so. So when you have a support like this, you can then put some nice uh, single rail coaster track right next to it. And that will give you a really nice triangular support. So yeah, um, I'll uh, have to figure out a nice way to do most of these supports. But uh, I think it will be a fun challenge. Because I uh, normally don't really uh, do custom supports. So yeah, um, let's just do it. Alright, the track now has custom support for all of its length. Now, in a few places, I kept the original supports, but most of them uh, have something custom. Now, I already showed you the lift hill, which was easy to do. And some other parts, um, yeah, I used several tricks to uh, get uh, yeah, the track to look like uh, how I wanted it to. Now, um, in some parts, um, the custom supporting can be very easy. I know I'm going to get some questions about this, so uh, I'll just uh, explain what I did. So, for example, if you have a situation like this, um, where the support is here on uh, on this edge of the track, then it's just very easy to just connect a, a single rail coaster track to it, because you can just build it right next to it, and then just uh, move it the way you want, and then you just continue building the single rail track coaster until it hits the ground. So that's uh, basically the situation that I want on every tile, since I'm only using single rail coaster track to do these uh, supports. So, um, as you can see, uh, I've built some straight track here. You can see that the supports, um, they appear on alternating uh, tiles. But on, in some situations, um, I want, actually want a support to appear on a tile like this. Now, if you have this part of a curve, of a bank curve, um, you can see that um, there's a support here on a tile where um, if it was a straight track there would not be a support. So we can just copy this track piece and just paste it somewhere else and as you can see a support now appears here. So uh, I've did that in several places throughout the track, you can see some pink track over here. So later um, I will color this track invisible so the track will not be uh, visible anymore but the support will still be there. And as you can see, this support is also on the correct place to connect a single world coasted track to it. Now, um, there's also a, a few spots where um, the track is uh, like sit down track, as you can see here. So then the support just appears in the middle. Now, if you still want to, to have a triangular support in parts like that, um, I just place some extra track here. This is just some twister coasted track. And this first part of a barrel roll can actually be used to move uh, support to the side. So if you can see, I uh, place uh, this part here, you can see this support, this, uh, support diverts from the middle to one of the sides, depending on uh, the orientation of this barrel roll piece. 
So that's something we can use uh, to also move these supports to the side. And you can see uh, I did that uh, same thing here. Now, strictly speaking, I probably could have also just copied and pasted this track piece under the track to get the support to exactly where I want it to be without having to move uh, the track to the left or the right here. But uh, yeah, I think this also works pretty well. Now, um, of course, um, this track doesn't uh, look right uh, when it's still pink. So I'm just going to make this um, track here invisible. Actually, I can remove this track now. Right, I will make this pink track invisible. I actually colored, colored it pink, so it was uh, more visible. And you could also, uh, by the way, see that uh, I colored the support of the single rail cozy track pink. And that's also uh, for the same reason, just so it's more visible. So uh, that I don't forget to hide any of these supports that the single rail coast track might generate as I build it. Alright, and we still have some of these track pieces here where uh, I moved the supports to the left or the right. So we will simply um, move them under surface. And then we don't see them anymore. As you can see here, still a stray support and making them pink. Um, yeah, definitely helps uh, making them visible. So yeah, it just helps to uh, make them stand out from the rest so that I can then uh, hide them. I basically just hide this uh, support by moving it under surface with a tile inspector. And there's another one just visible here. And now it's gone. Alright, um, the custom supporting should be done now. So now I can focus on making the ride look pretty. I'm going to uh, fill out these canyon walls with these canyon pieces and I'm going to give the ride a nice station. Let's go! Okay, um, I already wanted to take a quick break from the time lapse just to show the station and the transfer track that I built. So yeah, um, I actually started with the catwalk for this lift hill. So as you can see, it's just this multi-dimension cozy track, but uh, most of the track has been made invisible, so it only still shows the catwalk. I think, uh, yeah, uh, I think this looks great. Uh, I think it's a great way to do uh, uh, the catwalk under a lift hill for the for a flying coaster. Uh, I really love the addition of these, uh, this invisible color. It's just so uh, versatile and allows you to do some really cool uh, tricks nowadays. Now, um, I've or already done uh, the station of the ride. Now, I I've decided for the colors to uh, actually um, use a bit of this red color, which you don't really see in the rest of this area. Um, I think I will just keep the red color just localized around this coaster. Uh, just to represent uh, the danger of a Leviathan. I've been playing lots of Subnautica in the in the past few days. Um, but yeah, um, ar around this area, the area will be... Um, the subsea sands will be more colorful again. So it will just be localized here. But I think it, uh, it actually does make for quite an interesting color scheme. Now, as for the station, just lots of these pillars. Uh, some more of these uh, invisible um, doors. So it only shows the door frames. I think it makes for some cool looking arches. And also for the plants here, again, some more of this red color. And with that done, uh, I think uh, it's time to open the ride. And uh, yeah, since the stats of this coaster are quite um, quite high, uh, especially the excitement rating, I expect a, a huge uh, rush of uh, guests uh, to, uh, yeah, to come for this ride. So we will probably see that uh, pretty soon. Now over here you can also see the transfer track, 
So I just uh, suspended some of these monorail tracks above the track here and I hit the original supports. So uh, you could imagine that um, uh, the track would be lifted to the side here and then the um, trains can be loaded into one of these uh, storage tracks. Again, quite simple building, but uh, I think it uh, fits here pretty well uh, here in the center of this track. Okay, well, with that with that done, uh, I can finally start on the canyon walls now, which will be uh, quite a job. Okay, the decoration of this ride is now completed. <laughs> yeah, I'm just uh, super thrilled with how it turned out. Uh, yeah, I think this uh, this foliage uh, looks looks great here. Especially, um, yeah, I added some, some of this grass with this uh, deeper red color. I think it works really well with the uh, other foliage here. But yeah, I'm just uh, super happy with how it turned out. Uh, I th think it looks great with all these rocks in between. Now I also put some of this smoke on top of these rocks um, to uh, act like uh, like bubbles. I think it works pretty well. Uh, someone also uh, suggested it in the in the comments, and uh, yeah, it was something that was I was already uh, planning to do, and uh, I think it worked pretty well here on top of these uh, rocks. But yeah, if you have any uh, suggestions uh, for uh, for my videos, just uh, let me know in the in the comments. But yeah, just added some of these ruins in between. Uh, added a little rock overhang for the coaster to go under here. Uh, here's some more of these plants. Uh, a little bit of a hilly, a rocky landscape over here. And here with the pretzel loop, we can see these uh, darker or these deeper parts. I gave them a darker color of rocks just to signify that uh, it's a little bit uh, darker uh, below here. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm just uh, really, really happy with how this ride uh, turned out. And it looks like it's uh, quite a crowd pleaser uh, as well. The queue is uh, uh, pretty much filled to the brim. And why? Well, yeah, that's uh, obviously because of the high excitement rating, which means uh, guests will uh, seek out this ride. Yeah, <laughs> I just can't talk, stop looking at this ride. I'm just uh, so happy with uh, with the results. Now, um, something which I should probably do is add a, uh, another entertainer to this uh, area and name him after uh, my most recent patron. Okay, hey, Jake Southgate, uh, thank you so much for uh, deciding to join me as a patron. Uh, the support is really appreciated and uh, I hope you enjoy your uh, spot in the park next to this uh, giant coaster. Now, uh, all patrons get a spot in the park as an entertainer. And if you also want a spot in the park as an entertainer, you will find a link to my Patreon channel in the video description. The support is really appreciated. Alright, that's all the building I'm going to do for this episode. Super happy with the result. Now, uh, if you uh, enjoyed this video, uh, please don't forget to uh, like this video. It would really help out my channel. And if you want to see more videos like these, you can always subscribe. Now, I hope you enjoyed watching me build. I think it will be fun to end this episode with a ride on this coaster. Alright, that's going to be all for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you again in the next one. See you later. Bye.